What would you say if I told you it can live for a thousand years? That its stinging tentacles can trap and kill an entire fish? That it can walk around with a single foot? Or that there is one subfamily of fish, 30 species, that live inside its deadly tentacles? Folk Reef Supply and Worldwide Corals present my first clownfish anemone tank. Don't forget to watch the first video in this series where we walk you through how to set up this innovative marine 14 gallon peninsula and go through all of the gear we use, link below. Anemones and clownfish. With more than 1,000 species, anemones are found all throughout our salty seas and oceans. But for our purposes, we're gonna focus on the most common species found in our hobby, bubble tip anemones. Bubble tip anemones, or BTAs for short, are usually found in either greens or reds. They derive their name from the unique bubbles they often form near their tips, although there are some specimens that never seem to develop those bubbles. Anemones can be a bit tricky to care for as they require extremely stable water parameters. Please be aware that if you are a true beginner, it is absolutely best practice to wait six months to one year before introducing anemones to a new system. This will help your system mature and also give you the time to work out the kinks. All of the bubble tip nems featured in today's video are a mix of anemones I've had for over a year as well as some new specimens from Worldwide Coral. And even though this tank is a new setup, I'm using pre-cycled rock, pre-cycled sand, and salt water from another tank that the nems are already used to. Bubble tip anemones can absolutely thrive under a variety of lighting conditions, but we always shoot for around 150 par. BTAs prefer a low to medium indirect pulsing flow, just enough to remove any waste, but not enough to hurt their tentacles. Although photosynthetic, BTAs do also require supplemental feeding. I like to feed my NEMS about once a week with small pieces of shrimp, but they also do like pellets, silver sides, and even some coral foods like reef chili. BTAs will walk around your tank until they find the perfect home, so be sure to protect them by placing guards over your wave makers. For the anemones featured in this video, I asked Worldwide Corals to send me a variety of colors, but nothing collectors or high-end. Moving on to clownfish, there are several different color and pattern varieties available. Clownfish are semi-aggressive and closely related to damselfish. For our 14 gallon build, a pair of either Ocellaris or Percula clownfish is the perfect amount. Fun fact for you, all clownfish are born male and only the largest and most aggressive become female. Unless you're building a large, specialized harem tank, you either need to keep clownfish by themselves or with a mated pair. Clownfish can live for a really long time, 10 to 20 years even in captivity, and they do not need an anemone for their survival. We recommend buying captive bred clownfish because they come to you disease free. For our innovative marine 14 build, we went with two premium black ice clownfish from Sea and Reef. One thing to note is sometimes your clownfish will not immediately interact with your anemone. In fact, I've had a clownfish that went well over a year before forming that symbiotic relationship, but then they were inseparable. Sand and scape. Since the NEMS will need low to medium flow, Carib Sea Special Grade is the perfect sand for this setup. I use just enough to cover the bottom glass, probably less than 10 pounds total. I smoothed it out by hand, pushing the sand away from the edges of the tank. There really wasn't much aquascaping to do since my anemones were already attached to rocks in their quarantine tank. The Carib Sea Life Rock Nano Kit is the perfect size and amount of reef rock for this build. Anemones really like crevices to sink their feet into to be protective, and unfortunately this rock isn't the best for that. But by putting several small rocks together, you can create artificial crevices and great habitats for those anemones to put their feet into. I didn't need to use any epoxy or super glue or cement to put these pieces together because I only used three small pieces and they're all balanced quite well on the sand bed. A minimal scape works really well for this system because your anemones will puff out and grow and cover the scape over time. Just be sure to provide enough habitat for your anemones to move around and grow over the years. 
One more consideration is because this build has a powerful Mighty Jet DC return pump, it puts out a lot of flow. So be sure not to place your aquascape too close to the front of the tank because when that flow hits the front, it's really powerful and needs time to dissipate. For that reason, I placed my aquascape closer to the rear of the tank and left areas on the side of the scape so that you could get a really good front to back flow pattern without directly hitting any of the anemones. Filling, cycling, leveling, and water parameters. I'm using Tropic Marin Pro Reef Salt and I used a colander to disperse the water more easily without disturbing the sand bed a huge amount. I added pre-cycled reef rock as well as a media bag full of rubble rock to the rear filtration chamber. Since most of you likely won't have pre-cycled reef rock, I would recommend cycling your tank using ammonia chloride and Fritz Turbo Start. It's always a good idea to use composite shims to level your tank, but honestly, this system is small enough that as long as it's relatively level to begin with, it's probably not necessary, but definitely best practice to do so. Once your tank is cycled, having stable water parameters is absolutely essential to the long-term health for your anemones. Just make sure you test frequently, make any changes extremely slowly, and don't bottom out your nitrates and phosphates. Gear setup. For lights, we went with the Aqua Illumination Prime 16 HD with the 12 inch flex arm. I tuned the color to 12,500 Kelvin and adjusted the intensity down to 34%. Using the PAR meter, this gave me between 100 and 125 PAR at the top of the aquascape. I will slowly increase the intensity to 45% because that gives me around 125 to 175 PAR at the top of the aquascape. Since the IM14 Peninsula comes with a Mighty Jet DC return pump, I set it to 2.1, which is the lowest setting on the pulse mode. And honestly, I found that to still be a little bit too much. So adding in a small ball valve or a random flow generator nozzle is probably a good idea. And honestly, I added both to the system. You can absolutely use a filter sock as your primary mechanical filtration, but I always like to keep activated carbon as a part of an anemone system just in case they slough off any toxins. It will help to remove that. So in that case, use the custom acrylic caddy, place the fiber filter balls up top, and place the carbon pack down below. It's summer here in the desert, which means the coolest my house ever gets is 77 degrees, but for those chilly winter months, I use a Finex 50 watt titanium heater plugged into a Bayi temperature controller to keep my temperature consistent around 77 to 78 degrees. No wave maker is necessary for this tank as the Mighty Jet return pump provides more than enough flow. I installed a Reef Breeders Prism auto top off unit and ran it into a small two gallon bucket. And finally, I'm using a Wi-Fi power strip I picked up on Amazon, and I love using these strips because it makes turning off your equipment for water changes a breeze, and being able to set an automatic timer to turn things back on is really helpful because eventually you will forget. Adding livestock. Let's start by adding the anemones, and if this is your first time purchasing an anemone, be sure to get one of a good size. I would say three to four, maybe even five inches. The larger the anemone you can pick up, the greater chance of success you'll have. For some reason, and this just could be peculiar to me, but I have had more success with the red and rose varieties and much less success with the green varieties of bubble tip nems. Never ever add a tiny anemone to your system. I'm talking things like one inch or two inches max. Small anemones, in my experience, do not do well and often will fade away and disappear in your tank. I have added more than a beginner should, but my goal is to show all of you what is possible after a year or two. And the other reason I added more than one or two is because I've had about half of these in a quarantine system and in a previous tank for almost two years now, so I know they're healthy and happy and well adjusted to my parameters. The greatest way for you to succeed in building this tank is to buy your anemones from a trusted source. Getting an anemone that has been in a stable system for as long as possible is absolutely key. We got our anemones from Worldwide Coral because they are aquaculture specialists and a company we really trust. 
You're definitely gonna want to temperature and drip acclimate your anemones, and we will always recommend quarantining all new livestock for a minimum of three to four weeks. Enough of all that background, let's actually get the anemones in the tank. Start by turning off your return pump and dimming your lights. Using a gloved hand, place the foot of the anemone into a portion of the aquascape that has crevices. It can take several minutes for the anemone to grab hold, so just gently keep your hand in place as long as necessary. Turn your flow back on and stick around for a bit because you may just find an anemone floating around your tank. If that happens like it obviously did to me, just turn off the flow and repeat the process. After your anemones have grabbed hold, give them at least a day to settle into their new environment before turning your lights back up. I highly recommend acclimating your new anemones to the lights over a period of several weeks. So if your goal is 45% intensity, maybe start out at around 25% and then every single day come back and increase the intensity percentage by one point. And of course, adjust your flow as necessary during those first few days to provide the perfect flow pattern, but after that, don't touch it. A change in flow can change the anemone's habitat and environment, and it can stress them out. Again, it's really important to keep not only consistent water parameters, but also consistent flow patterns as well. Moving on to the clownfish, you can absolutely add the clownfish the same day or add them sometime later. It goes without saying, drip, acclimate, and quarantine all new fish. If you bought aquaculture clownfish, they've probably never even seen an anemone. I recommend adding them directly to the anemone to give them the greatest chance of immediately pairing up. Using a gloved hand is perfect for this because you can pick up the clownfish with your hand, enclose it in a gentle fist, and then place it directly on top of the anemone. If your clownfish don't take to the anemone immediately, don't panic. It doesn't mean they're never going to. It can just take a little while, but there are some tricks you can do to help encourage that union. Adding a cleanup crew. Personally, I always wait until the first signs of algae before adding cleanup crews. A mix of snails, hermits, and shrimp will likely do just fine for this system, and we'll link to our cleanup crew video below. Long-term care. Of course, it goes without saying you're going to want to do and need to do all of the usual maintenance, including water changes. As a part of these water changes, I like to add a small amount of beneficial bacteria, something like Microbacter 7, as well as coral aminos. One of my favorite Instagrammers and YouTubers goes by the name Her Nano Reefs. She is an anemone expert and puts out some beautiful pictures and some great content that can help you have success and we'll link her channels below. I feed my clownfish twice a day but very small amounts in a closed system that is this small. If you overfeed, it can quickly escalate to a high nutrient problem. I pretty much exclusively feed them Hikari Mysis shrimp because it mixes completely clear and it doesn't add a whole bunch of extra nutrients into the tank like some other frozen foods will and especially pellet foods. But you can absolutely also supplement their diet with some pellet foods. One of my favorite is TDO Chroma Boost, the small size. For my anemones, I will target feed them once a week. I will turn the flow off and feed them either some small pieces of shrimp one week, and then oftentimes the other week, I will do some Hikari Mysis shrimp with some mixed in coral food and coral aminos. I personally like to feed my anemones right before I do a water change. That way, when I flip the system back on, I let it cycle out some of those excess nutrients and then immediately do a water change and change out my mechanical filtration to keep those water parameters are stable and not give any time for that food to break down. Since dosing isn't as important for this system, I have found I don't really need a dosing pump, but rather I just dose manually after doing a weekly water change if there's anything that needs dosing. You may need to either increase your filtration or lower your feeding if you find that your nitrate and phosphates are getting out of hand. There are some great protein skimmer options as well as reactor options that you can either fit in the rear filtration chamber or hang off the side. Change your activated carbon every couple weeks and then do your absolute best to keep your hands out of the tank and don't change anything. I said it once and I'm going to say it again, consistency is the key to success for anemones. Click here to see the four other habitats we built with this innovative marine 14 gallon system. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.